So crickets, I'm guessing most people maybe weren't expecting me to say that, but your company makes protein bars out of cricket powder. So first things first, how much protein is there in, uh, in a cricket or cricket powder? A huge amount. So crickets and actually most insects in general are very high in the best quality protein. So crickets contain about 65% protein by dry weight, which is about twice that of beef for comparison. And so what's the process for turning them into a protein bar? You grind them, you dry them? You it's very simple. So we take crickets, we remove the moisture, and then we mill them into a fine powder. And that has a very neutral taste, very little smell, and it's extremely high in protein, as well as micronutrients like iron, calcium, and B vitamins. And what makes them good for the planet? So you farm them vertically, indoors. They require very little feed, very little water, very little space. And the United Nations actually estimates it's about 20 times more resource efficient to raise crickets compared to cows once you factor in all those fewer resources that are used. Uh, there's been a lot said about the sustainability of in using insects as protein, but I know that w at least one study has kind of countered those claims. Is there a chance that those claims have been overstated a little bit? There's definitely a huge amount of hype around every new idea. In reference to that particular study, what they basically showed was that crickets are only slightly better than chickens today. And obviously chickens have been, they've been bred for hundreds of years and billions of chickens. The cricket industry is less than 1% of the size of the chicken industry and we're just getting started. So the idea that we're already more efficient than chickens today when we're just starting this industry is very exciting. How do you get over though the ick factor? I mean, no matter, you know, we are experimenting with more and more foods than ever, the, I think the American consumer palate, but this, you know, do you, you still have a lot of people who say, what, that's really like odd and icky. We do, but this, this has been done before, right? So there's a long list of foods which were once considered strange and have now crossed this chasm into mainstream. So we often look at sushi as an example. And 40 years ago, the idea of us eating raw fish was kind of weird. And then a chef in LA basically hid the raw fish inside rice and seaweed, seaweed and effectively reimagined sushi for Western palates. We look at these bars as our California rolls. So we're basically taking the crickets, combining them with natural, easy ingredients like nut butters and dried fruits, and basically offering this introductory vehicle to get people comfortable with the idea before suggesting they eat stir-fried grasshoppers, for example, and which is a tougher sell. I would imagine.